Okay, so um, so I, I thought we'd start off a little bit of Mudbox. So if you guys open up Mudbox, uh, and I'm going to show you some of the tools uh, and just go through some things inside of there that help you out. Um, now, when you're actually sculpting, uh, you're doing character creation, there's a few things you want to consider and think about, okay? Um, the two programs that people use the most uh, for character sculpting and just sculpting out details on like architectural pieces, machinery, things like that, are ZBrush and Mudbox, okay? Um, they work, the concept is the same with both of them, but they work differently. Um, Mudbox works off of the idea that I'm dealing uh, strictly with a, uh, a mesh. Do I have? Okay. I'm dealing strictly with a mesh uh, that is um, polygonal, right? So either I could start off with one of their templates. Uh, that they have in it, or um, if I already know what the concept and the design of my character is, I would go into Maya and I would model a low res version of it that I can. That's very has to be clean, meaning uh, no ingons, which are multi sided polygons, more than you know four sides, no weird. Uh, topology, that kind of stuff. And I would then bring that into Mudbox and then start subdividing it and adding details that I would need to it. ZBrush works off of the fact that either I could work off of uh, that same premise of bringing in a low res model and start to detail it out and subdivide it. Or you would use things like Z spheres and voxels to actually just sculpt out of you know this stuff and then have ZBrush convert it to a polygonal surface at some point. And but in either of these cases, when you start to get into a very detailed character, uh, polygonal wise, you can get upwards of five, eight, twelve million polygons for your sculpt, sometimes even more. And obviously, that model would not function well to, to rig or to animate or to have in a game engine or stuff like that. So there has to be a lower res version. And that's when you would do what's called retopologizing. It's where you take the high res model and you bring it into either Maya and use the 3D modeling tools or you would bring it into uh, a program called... Uh, a program like uh, 3D Coat. And 3D Coat is basically a program where you would come in and uh, you take the high res and you literally do what Maya's tools now do, which is you make a low res version of the model that has good edge flow and everything to it. And you would adjust for its topology. So, in other words, if I go in. Um, 3D model topology. Oh, topology and. <laughs> Knowing the lingo does help. Like, come on. Now, if I could just get my my interwebs actually going at a reasonable speed. Oh, come on, man. Good thing to do my even to speed. Go on LinkedIn, search 3D modeler, see all the terms they list, and then Google them. There's a uh, edge. <laughs> Demonstrate your knowledge. Yeah, but like to get the knowledge, 
Here we are. So, when you're actually doing uh, your low res, I won't spend a lot of time on that, at least today, because there's a lot of stuff we got to go over. But when you're doing a sculpt, like, oh, if I want to sculpt this lady out, you'll notice people will often uh, take the photo, make a layer in Photoshop, and start drawing their plan of attack of how the edge flow and how the wireframe is going to be. And then that's how they would go into Maya and start to create this low res version. So when you're thinking of edge flow, and there's lots of little diagrams and things that you can see of how the edge flow would work. And the reason uh, that you would have this is because when you animate the character or creature, or whatever it is, if you're, all your edges are flat, like horizontal, it's not going to deform properly, right? So we have all these curves and muscles and things that are going on that if my edge flow is not actually working right, um, it's going to deform weird. And it's not going to actually have a proper deformation of the mouth and how the eyes would blink and how the eyebrows would lift up and pull the skin to make it look realistic and all of these different things here. So even if I'm dealing with uh, a body, this is giving you a general idea of how the edge flow of this body would actually work. I think. Oh, bloody hell, stop that. And you just want to keep opening it fine. But this gives you a good idea of how you can actually see some of this edge flow for if you were breaking something up. So, but first, and you can actually see how the lines are kind of conforming to how the body is shaped, right? So in the pelvis area, it's more like a V shape. Uh, when you're dealing with uh, the chest, the abs, you'll notice that there's these curvatures that actually happen when you look at the shoulder, stuff like that. So if I have them and I take into account for that and give some extra outlines of where muscles would be and how things are underlined, then when I have this thing rigged and it's moving, it's going to be much more realistic than having like some simple boxy shapes with straight lines. And then when the character bends, it looks like a rubber band bending as opposed to an actual character that has muscles and things like that. But it all starts with first with having a nice high res character. Now, if I'm going to do a character that, okay, he's a hero or he's muscular, unless you've studied anatomy, <laughs> do your research and look up images so you could see where the muscles are. And understand it's like the well, also what the extremes are, right? So sometimes you're going for that. If I'm going for a hero, this guy's like super cut, not obviously not like the um, your average person walking down the street. Um, some you know the difference of somebody who's like wow they're just really into just working out and toning. The difference of somebody who's like going for like much more mass and how big they are and just how um, huge somebody can get you know so you have to decide based off of that of what uh, what that is and what you're going for and just kind of like <laughs> he cracks me up I love this guy uh, <laughs> um, but <laughs> When you're actually going for the scale, I need to look and see where the muscles are, how they would define, where I might put veins, how they look, you know, where the abs are, how many there are, you know, how they're actually cut in, and use that as a reference, right? If my character is not ridiculously cut, or if they are wearing thicker clothes or armor, I at least need to get a general idea of what their silhouette is, right? 
uh, and then go off of that. And that would be my references. You know, here's a guy who's he's very fit. I, you know, he's not like a bodybuilder, but he, you know, he's slender. He's toned. You can see the muscle definition. Clearly, he, he does exercise and work out, but he's not trying to gain muscle mass, right? Um, so when you're going for those and you're starting to see uh, the different definitions, even if it's an alien or a creature, you start to think about what are, how does this creature move and how does it work? What is the anatomy of it? Um, one of the classes that we used to have uh, in the program I was in charge of is we had uh, a class of just modeling characters. And the very first thing people would do is they would have to make a muscle sculpture showing where the muscles were as, so that you could say how they would work and understanding that because that's going to change the silhouette of the body itself, right? If the muscles look too big or too distorted, it starts to look cartoony or fantasy or even just kind of like, oh, I don't want to show him. <laughs> it's just wrong. Um, nah, he's, I mean, like, he's just huge, but there, there are some, you know, where you get, like, you see someone walking down the street and there is just so much to them that you're just like, yeah, okay, tad much. Um, and this guy with the implant scares me a lot. He just, yeah, he has, no, those are muscle implants. Yeah, you can get, <laughs> you can get muscle implants. You can get pectoral, bicep, calf all that stuff implants to look muscular um, to each his own. <laughs> I, I will just say that much. I, I prefer just to, to hit the dojo or the gym if I was really, but you know, to each his own. Um, <laughs> but I digress. So we'll go to, um, let me just show you. There was a, uh, where are you? So at one point, I was screwing around and I did this sculpture here. Because I was showing um, defining muscles and just trying to get a big, you know, muscle guy and the reference I had used was an old picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was like you know in his prime and and big so and it's so funny and it's more of a stylized look but it's it's heavily referenced off of his body of where the definitions were and how um, different parts of his body was just as a, as an example and the idea is I needed that reference because I don't remember anatomy to that level because I don't do it all the time, <laughs> you know. So you need that reference to go side by side and start to develop. And I worked mostly, you know, on the upper body. I didn't really I'd started to work a little bit on the, the thighs and stuff. But the idea was just trying to get the sculpt so I could actually get the wings in. Um the old abadabas get some of the cuts on the sides and just start to you know based off of that the clavicle and different parts of the body to start to show the definition but I need to kind of get number one I need to know what the tools are which is what we're going to go over and um, I also need to know um, you know what is going to be the easier ways of getting some of the definition and the proportions so if I start off new, let's just, I'm just going to open up a new scene and I'm going to start with the human body. And I've used uh, this guy here as that example, right? Uh, I turned this into what you saw a second ago. 
So basically, you know, this is before he fell into toxic waste and got all those superpowers and got all buffed. <laughs> um, because that's how you do it, you know, evidently. <laughs> um, so, how many of you guys have, have uh, sculpted in Mudbox? Couple, okay, a couple of guys. So, I'm going to start off the bases. Just, you may, uh, if you've never touched it, so that you know the interface. If you have touched it, maybe you'll learn a little bit more and know where some of the stuff is. And then we're going to get into the tools and do a quick sculpt and just look at some of the techniques, okay? So, the first thing, while I'm in here, is just the general interface. I want to kind of run through that. So, if I go up to the top left, we see we have these multiple tabs up here. 3D view, UV view. So, uh, this is important for, we'll talk about this a little more later, and that's just the tab at the top left. Um, these are the UVs of the model that I have selected or that I'm working on right now. And you can see it's already nicely laid out. Um, so you want to have, if you're, br you're planning on bringing a model in uh, and you'll be subdividing it, ideally you want to have it UV mapped before you bring it in. And subdividing it will not change, radically change the UVs and it saves you time later. Okay. Um, the image browser. So one of the uh, powerful things of Mudbox is that I can bring in images to utilize for sculpting as well as texturing. So I can use different images to sculpt details. Uh, like if I bring in an image as a bit, let's say a bump map, I can use that to create bump map details on the character. I can also use it for texturing and stenciling, which is nice. Uh, Mudbox Community. This is a little forum that you can go to um, where you can actually go in and uh, they'll have all sorts of stuff that you can download. Models that people have created, textures that people have made, things like that. I don't use it that much, but usually I just bring stuff in, but it is available and sometimes they have some cool stuff. All the way at the bottom left, we have our tabs. Sculpting tools, paint tools, curve tools, pose tools, and select and move tools. So let's go back to the sculpting tools. Sculpting tools are as, uh, as it sounds. These are the tools I can use um, to sculpt out the character. Yes? Well, the bulge tool is in there, so you have several. Hold on one sec. So down here, oh, you know what? I'll just turn this off. Whenever I go to one of the tools, this is one of the very nice things about Mudbox, and it's very similar to Maya, but it's even better in Mudbox. When I put my cursor over one of the tools or one of the properties, it pops open a little box that tells me what that tool is and how it's used. This is really important when you're trying to figure out something and you can't remember, right? So if I go like, oh, what does the grab tool or what does the pinch tool do? And I put the cursor over, um, use the long soft edges to sharpen them. Oh, okay, I get it. And so you can see what all these little tools are just by putting the cursor over it, the tool leaving it there for a second, and then it tells you, you know, what that tool is. So we'll go more into the tools, but here's where I use different tools to sculpt the character, modify the character, um, simulate adding more mesh to the character, cutting the character, uh, imprinting images like to stamp into the character, um, to amplify details, to freeze parts so that I actually can't affect certain areas, which we'll go over today. Masking out areas, erasing. So there's a lot of tools. Uh, the paint tools, once I've created an image map in this particular channel, and I would like to get into those as well, I have the paintbrush, projections, eye drop. A lot of the tools that are in here are reminiscent and the same as ones you would find in Photoshop, which makes it pretty nice. 
curve tools are, I can actually bring in curves, draw curves, or make curves that I can use to help me to sculpt. So in other words, if there's some specific details, I'm trying to draw like a circle on my superhero's chest or something or some, you know, shape. I use the curves just like an illustrator and draw it on his chest. And then when I use the brush, the brush will snap to it and draw it out exactly the way it is. The pose tools are okay. <laughs> um, so what the pose tools do is they let you draw joints on a character or creature and then you can rotate it, it. There's a little weight that you can scale to actually modify it. Like if I wanted his arms more in a T pose than in an A pose. The problem is, is that they're not the best at it, right? So don't do it. I'll just show you. Watch this. So I'm going to take um, create a joint. Put one right there, and I'm going to drag it out to about there. And you know what? Actually, and now if I pose it, see there? So a horror movie or not? But here's how it works. If I actually, you know what? I'm going to undo that. I'm going to turn off way, uh, mirroring, and uh, now I'm just going to go, let's say, from here out. And you see what that is? There's this line is what's waiting, what's going to be affected, right? So now if I go to pose it, do you see that? But do you see what it's doing here? So. There are much better ways of, uh, I can actually adjust the weight of it and paint the weights. So if I say, oh, I don't want it to, um, to affect this area, or I do want it to affect it, and then I can actually, see, so I can weight this more, or hold down control and weight it less. And then, Pose it. And so, Professor, the direction, the line of the uh, the line of the create joint represents the area that you want to pose it. For example, if the line is pointing to the right, then you would you would. Pose You're gonna. It. That's what it's gonna weight and move. So yeah, where the line is drawing or where you draw it towards is what it's gonna affect. And the more green it is when it does it, the more it's being influenced by that joint. But you can obviously see there's a few issues with it, right? If I wanted this character in a T pose or in some kind of pose, I would probably take it into Maya, rig it, get it in the position I want, and then bring it back in. Because it's going to be a lot easier that way because these tools are just really not, they're, they're for quick little things, but they're not really designed uh, to fully pose an unrigged character. So I don't really use them that much because they're not like super awesome. <laughs> you know, um, they sometimes can do certain things. Like if I grab his elbow like here and say, oh, influence this. And now I rotate around and then, but you see how it's affecting here? He's rubber man. So I'd have to go in, hold down control and paint my weights up here. Let's increase the strength. So it's not affecting up here at all. Right. And now try to pose it. But then we have this issue. So I, I really, really am not a big fan of their posing tools, but that's what they are, right? Your select move tools, faces, uh, objects, borders, UV shells, translate, rotate. This is how I can select those different things listed or move them. This is really good for when you are doing stuff like I'm bringing in, okay, I've textured my character, but I also modeled clothes or a hat or something like that. And I want to bring them in and put them on the character. So I'd import them in, then use these tools to position them and move them. And then I can just start to dress my character or put whatever other elements I've added in and created or props or things inside of here. Okay. 
and to the right I have the stamps which are these are all images and you can bring in your own um, that can be used for sculpting or texturing we'll sh I'll show you that soon stencils are projections that you would use that you can project for, once again for sculpting or texturing once again you can bring in your own images to do uh, fall off is the brush tip okay so I can make my brush tip sharp like the first one the default is the third one top row um, and these changes the the hardness of the brush and the intensity of the brush from the center of the brush to out when you're painting or sculpting material presets oh this is kind of fun so watch this for a second here's my character this is the default material but I can assign different materials to him so black gold chalk now he's uh, chocolate syrup why it's kind of funny that they made that as a material but hey <laughs> you know with these presets um, this one is clay which is somewhat um, you know it's like this flatter mat with a darker edge and you have a whole bunch there's even this one which is the red clay which is very reminiscent if you've ever used ZBrush you'll notice it looks very similar to that but the cool thing is oh check this one out the graphic you see this um, you have an inversion of that this one's kind of neat, where it's a silicone outline. It's You notice it's giving the character this darker outline. Yeah. So if you're trying to paint, let's say you were ultimately going to bring this into Unreal, or if you were going to bring it into Maya and then create a material shader that had a dark outline, you can simulate that dark outline of what it would look like in here and then recreate it uh, inside of whatever uh, software you plan on rendering out of. Uh, last thing in this one, which is important, depending on your character, you'll notice there's a few of these materials are really shiny, like this one, the reflective bright. And these have a built-in um, reflective property. So these are really good for, uh, I can use images to show in the reflection. Um, so depending, like these are really good for when I'm doing an eyeball and I want to see a reflection in the eyeball or... Uh, sunglasses or metals and things like that and I I still paint in these and I paint where it's shiny and reflective uh, but this gives me the properties turned on so that I can then go in and manipulate them any way that I want make sense it just depends on what you're trying to do right um, what we'll be doing, we'll be using um, a material that has some shine to it because uh, unless it's stylized, you probably want to have the ability of adding shine and reflection to your character for uh, moisture on their forehead and, you know, and, and oiliness and uh, wet around the eyes, that kind of stuff. So it just depends on what, what style and what you're trying to go for. Lighting presets is when we set up as you click on these you'll notice that it changes the lighting of your character and we can also make our own lights so some of these are good for like a dramatic check that out and depending on your machine and how powerful it is you can just it'll it'll give you a little message like do you want to do this just say stop telling giving me this message and it won't keep popping that up when you switch them uh, but if I right click and where are you? Uh, bah, 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 bah. Display. Where is it in here? Every program, it's different. Oh, I know where it is. If I go to uh, a particular light, I can turn shadows on, but it will. Um, have a tendency at times of slowing things down. Um, I'll show you that a little bit later, but it depends on what machine you're on. 
But you can see that all these actually change what that material looks like, right? It's the same material, it looks different with all the different lighting. For right now, uh, just for the, for the moment, let's keep it on the default, which is this one, and we'll change it up later. Uh, you have to go, I'll show you in a little bit. It's, you have to go into the light itself uh, and then tell it in the light to turn on shadows. I'll show you in just a minute. So once you have this down, oh, and then your camera bookmarks. Like Maya, you can set up bookmarks so that you can zoom in on the face, zoom in to different parts. And then the last thing is off to the right, which is one of the most important things, which you have three tabs, layers, object list, and viewport filters. In the layers, you have two different types of uh, layers you can do. Paint layers, like in Photoshop, that each have their own transparency. And sculpting layers, which is what we'll be using uh, to add levels of detail. Okay, So I can actually make an entire sculpt on one layer or break it up into several layers. And what that means is imagine I make a character and he's fully detailed like a casual guy, right? And then what I do is I, I want to zombify him, right? So I, I make a brand new sculpting layer and I start sculpting in, you know, oh, there's like his cheek is like caved in and there's parts on it and there's his, he has holes in his clothing and he's all like, has all these little details that make him look grody, his eyes are receded. I could put that all on one layer and turn it off and on, and it will change that level of detail on him, which is kind of nice. Um, object list are all the things in your scene. So if I click on that, we see we have a perspective camera, top, side, and front, just like Maya. I have a directional light. This is where you would turn on shadows if you wanted to see it. So if I click on the directional light and say cast shadows, and you'll notice when I click on that, it starts casting the shadows. See? And then I can change the resolution of that shadow. So I clicked on the directional light, and down below it are the properties of whatever I have selected. Hold the phone. I'll hit resume. Where were we? Oh, yes. So uh, I'm going to go back to my layers. And remember, we have the sculpting and the paint layers at the top right. We can't see ah, wrong machine. Too many. <laughs> so I'm back on my layers. And I'm on the sculpting layers up at the top right. And when you actually look, there's uh, these little icons up here, if you look at that. So you can see the sculpt and the paint layers, and then underneath you see there's a little page with a plus, a little folder with a plus, a garbage can, and a little mask. The, the page with a plus is to make a new layer. The folder is so you can organize them, and you can have folders and organize different layers of uh, sculpts or textures. So in other words, like if I, that zombie uh, example I was telling you about earlier, if I made a folder that uh, had zombie, and then each layer, like one layer was like, oh, the skin, you know, uh, sculpt. Another layer was the uh, clothing sculpt, and I could break it up that way. The garbage can, obviously, is to get rid of whatever I have selected. And the little mask is to mask out so I can make an alpha of a sculpt. So without hiding it, I can hide it by painting it away, which is nice. Or show it again so I, it's non-destructive and I can even tone down some of the sculpt that I have just by minimizing it by adding a mask and painting it like with a lower percentage uh, so that's kind of cool so I do this in a non-destructive way and this character if I look if you look at your keyboard uh, above no this is mud box Rigging is a totally different thing. Rigging is for the... Right, but the, but the guy 
die the low res not the high res what we're setting up is to do the high res model the low res is one that you would make from the high res or scale it down and then that's the one you would rig and set up not the high res version so when I have this guy here sorry, uh, yes so when you look at your keyboard above the arrows there's a page up and page down uh, right above your arrows on the Mac keyboard on the PC depending on your keyboard you just have to find where it at where it is but if I page up and down I want you to look what happens do you see when I page up and page down what it's doing is it's cycling through the subdivisions of my character. So this character at its lowest, level zero, is 2,068 polygonal quads, polygonal faces. If I up arrow, the highest division, subdivision I have is twice that, which is 8,272. And every time I subdivide it, it increases that resolution. So when I'm actually sculpting a character, the biggest, most important part is initially to get um, the silhouette first, not the details, not the high res, not all the muscles, the silhouette, okay? So what that basically means, let me close this for a second, if I right click in my perspective view, my camera view, and I turn off lighting, this is the silhouette of my character. And I want my silhouette to look like what it is going to be and to be strong. If my silhouette isn't strong, then I'm not going to get uh, an easily identifiable character, right? So I turn off my lighting by right clicking and clicking on lighting and shutting that off and on at the bottom left so I can actually see what the silhouette is. Okay, and why that's so important is that if I go in and I look at character silhouettes, you're able to see strong silhouettes that you can identify, right? So the stronger the silhouette, the easier it is for someone to identify that silhouette. Um, you have to look at it from the perspective of not just adults, but little kids, right? Little kid looks at this. They don't need to see all the details to know that's Mickey Mouse or that's Bugs Bunny or that's Bart Simpson. So the silhouette is a very important part of character design. And if I don't have that silhouette that, that's identifiable, then it's harder for some people to actually identify what that character is. Right? So if I look at something like this, I would guess that most of you guys could identify the characters of these silhouettes. And you just do a lookup of a character silhouette. But... Look at these silhouettes that you have here, right? And most of them you'll be able to identify. Some of you will be able to identify all of them, right? This is without details. This is without wrinkles, pores, color. You can identify them. Those other things are icing on the cake and sometimes a crutch. So if I have a strong silhouette, the rest of this stuff is just icing on the cake. So I want to make my character to have a strong silhouette when I'm actually designing him. Right? So if I go in here and I'm back and I say, oh, you know what? I want this to be like a hero silhouette. Then I want to start to sculpt out that silhouette and give him that hero stature, that shape. That V shape with the broad shoulders and, you know, and a muscular silhouette. So to start that off, um, 
I'm going to start off with uh, a sculpting layer. And right now, our, our friend is not that detailed. If I press W and zoom in, this is the wireframe of him. If I page down, we can see it's even less. And as we subdivide, do you notice he gets smoother? I'm paging up, going from page up to page down. And it takes every quad and it subdivides it into four. So when I subdivide again, all those fours will turn into individual fours and so on and so forth. Not yet, though. <laughs> but yeah, that's how you subdivide. So I'm going to level one. And uh, that's another thing you want to be careful of. A lot of times people boost it up to like six, level five, level six yeah, immediately. Six. Yeah, we don't do level six soon. <laughs> you build up to it, right? You get the silhouette with a low res model first, and then you start to, to build it up. So I'm still at level one. I'm going to create a new sculpting layer just by clicking on that new page under sculpt layers and I'm going to use uh, let's use the bulge tool just to add um, a little bit of shape to him so I'm going to use the bulge tool the letter B left mouse button so I hold down the letter B and I hold down the left mouse button and as I move my mouse left to right changes the brush size the letter M, as in Mary, hold that down left mouse button, changes the strength. So when you see the line coming out of it, the longer the line, the more strength coming out of the brush. But I don't want a lot. And I'm also, before I start sculpting, I'm going to turn on symmetry. So I've chosen the bulge tool, I go to the right in my properties, and I turn the mirror, which is set to off, and change that to X. So whatever I do on one side will happen on the other, because trying to match it is, is not fun. So I turn on symmetry, mirror X, and anything I do now on one side is going to start to, it'll do it on the other side. My strength is low. I'm at a .39. And I start to slowly build up and say, oh, you know what, I want him to have more of pecs, right? And I'm just going to slowly start to build up just a little bit and give him some mass. Add a little to the shoulders. Go to the back and let's pull out the shoulder blades a little bit. Never mind that it's, it's poppy and it's low res. That's okay. Yep, that's it. And then you, then you call it a paint? It's a, it's a sculpt layer. So I'm under sculpt. So the sculpt tab is on. You got it? And I'm going to increase the brush size and start to add a little bit of mass to his arms. Once again, you notice I'm not cranking things up. I'm not, it's not a race. I'm not trying to hurry. I'm just trying to slowly build up and change his silhouette and add some mass and kind of go around. And now I have to make his arms a little bigger, and I'm going around his arms to do that. I'm not trying to make the cuts in his biceps to show them off. I'm just changing his silhouette and adding some mass where it needs it. I also go in, check it out, and I start to add with a low intensity just a little bit of where his rib cage is going to be. And his rib cage is going to kind of come, it's up here. Uh, so if we're looking at the body, we have the sternum up here, the solar plexus right here, and then the abs down here. And I'm going to come up, the ribs are going to go up to where uh, the solar plexus are, and then they come down to the sides, and then they come back up 
here because our ribs are not perfectly just um, cutting across our body. They're, they're curved. They come down from the spine, they dip down on the sides, and they come back up, up to around here. Okay. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of mass to where his thighs are. Add some quads to him. Once again, I'm not trying to like you know, build it out super fast. I'm, I'm just kind of going in and just starting to add some mass to him to kind of shape him out. So you can see I'm starting to develop his shoulder blades a little bit more. I'm keeping the indentation of his spine, added more definition to the ribs, work on the old glutes. And I'll only be able to go so far at this low res, but uh, now I'm going to add a little more to the wings. And I'm also going to start to shape that V shape. So once I have that, oh, here's the cool thing. Eyes up front for a second. So I did this on a sculpting layer. Watch what happens. I could turn the sculpting layer off and on. Do you see the changes I made? And you notice there's a little dial for strength. So when I click on the strength and drag it up and down, I can actually tone down that whole layer. See? So now I'm going to give him that V shape. <coughs> and to do that, I got to exaggerate his anatomy a little bit. So I'm going to grab, use the grab tool. I'm going to expand my brush larger, much larger. That's a little hard to see on the screen. Let me. Ah, uh, jinkies. What can we do? Do, 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 do. Ah, uh, what the. Uh, I don't know if that's much better. I'm trying to make the background a little bit easier to see on this projector, because I know it's a little. A little bit difficult. Um, there we go. There we go. Can you guys see that a little better? Is that easier? Is that okay? All right, so, so now I'm gonna take this grab tool, watch what I do, I'm gonna make it bigger. You see how big I'm making it? It's actually uh, covering up half his spine and going past his arm. And uh, from the back, I am gently gonna start to pull out his arm and his shoulders a bit to give him that V shape. Let's do a little bit for the front as well. Make sure to uh, adjust the arm as well for that because otherwise he's gonna do this weird bendy thing that's not gonna look right. And then we'll we'll fix it just a little bit because the heroes are tend to be exaggerated, the comic books. So I'm gonna tighten up that waist just a little bit, pulling that in. If only were this easy. <laughs> Give this guy wings. Pull those, uh, pull those wings out a little bit. And what you could see is I'm just changing. Now I'm going to push his pecs out just a little bit. Just a little bit. 
starting to give him you switch so what you're starting to see is on this low res model more definition of his body right so once again let's do a before and after check this out so we're looking at him like this front before then he falls into a bat of nuclear waste then he gets ripped next week yeah all your students are sick they jumped in a bat of nuclear waste for some reason <laughs> so back then we go forward, zoop, boom. And then we could see the silhouette changing. If I go to my silhouette, see that? So before, after. You see that change? So what I'm doing, and you'll notice, is I'm just, I'm not trying to get, I'm going to go back to the bulge tool. I'm not trying to get that instant gratification of all the details I'm trying to get a strong silhouette and I'm all working on a low res model but that's okay because I'm gonna subdivide it in a second and I'm just trying to get some of those um, little details I'm gonna put in the clavicle just a little bit right here boost up these muscles going to the neck and I can only do so much at this low resolution but you're starting to see this rough um, definition, definition that's happening. And that's what I'm going for. It's just trying to get um, some of those details in. This is also a good time that if you're using a reference to keep glancing back and forth at it to see that muscle guy. You know, it's like, where do I see those details? And then having that like kind of side by side as you're doing them. Of where I'd want those details to be and I'm not at a high enough resolution where I can get these details but I'm trying to get just that that general shape going on and I'd spend my time just doing that a little bit <coughs> to get that general shape this dude works out so much he's like starting to get concave in the stomach He's concave man. Now we just start to just kind of detail a little bit of that out. But you get the general idea, right? Once I've gotten that the way I want it, and I've got it as uh, whether exaggerated or, uh, you know, however our, uh, my muscle guy is, then I can go to my next level, okay? So from here, so any questions so far? You guys okay so far? So now, I've got my rough definition of this guy. I'm going to make a brand new layer. And now I'm going to hit, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit, and I'm going to hit Shift-D twice to boost me up to level 3. Right now, he's at 132,000 polygons at level 3. So... Now, if I hit W and look at it, you can actually see, look at how small these guys are. So if I page down, this is level zero. Check it out. Ooh, if you can. Sorry. Sorry. Level one. It's hard. Well, on the, you can see it. It's... it's it's the projector. It's really hard to kind of show those. So, cool. So the more, the more obviously the more polygons I have, the more finite detail I can put in. 
That's why you don't jump to level five, six, or seven immediately, because you're you want to build detail on top of small details on top of larger details, not jump immediately to the tiny stuff. Good question. And say, oops. So what you can do is if you go under uh, mesh, you can delete the highest level. Do you see there's an option? So I can add levels, add new subdivision level options. So if I want to tweak it out, rebuild subdivision levels, delete highest level. You can also reduce and topologize, but my uh, my box is not the best at it, huh? Yes. You don't typically. I believe you can't be on that level when you delete it. You have to be on the one underneath. So if you want to delete level four, then be on level three. So now you'll notice. Here's something to note that. My <laughs> Oh yeah, they have definitely Let's see. So you'll notice next to that first sculpting layer there's a 1 under the L. That means level 1. And you'll notice now that I created a new one and added subdivisions, level the sculpting layer 1 has a no sign through it. Which means for me to affect that lower level, I have to page down to sub-level one, subdivision one. Right now, I'm in subdivision, subdivision three. So the moment I start painting in this, that new sculpting layer, there's going to be a three that appears next to it. And I can only paint on this layer when I'm at level three. Okay? So... Just to show you, let me go to my bulge tool. And I'm going to start adding a little more detail to the muscles now. And I'm just going to add a little bit to the bicep there. And as I do that now, you'll notice there's a three now next to my layer there. I'm downloading, I'm making a reboot, um, uh, a repair. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's fine. So check this out. So I'm starting to just go in and add. Do you see some of these details? And start to branch them out a little bit. I have a white background, but I'm using the default lighting. Now, to get the pecs, instead of cutting into them and trying to define it that way, I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to use the grab tool. And so instead of defining it out, I've already puffed them out a little bit, but I'm going to grab the area underneath and lift them upward a little bit to define the pecs. You see that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So instead of me like, oh, let me cut into it, I'm just taking the skin underneath a little bit and just kind of pushing it up a little bit to actually give me that definition. Are you inverting the tool? Or nope, just using the grab tool and just moving it up. So I'm not sculpting it, I'm just literally grabbing the mesh and tucking it up a little bit, the same way I pulled out the, um, the uh, armpits and stuff, see? So now here I can actually just kind of just pull that up. And it is relative to the angle that you're looking at it. You see that? And I can pull that down a little bit if I wanted to, or tuck it in. I can even... Yeah, 
Yes. Especially if you're starting to go a little too extreme on the strength and it's not subdivided enough. Yep. I'm starting like breaking and stuff. And I, I bulled stuff out too much and then I flattened it and it messed bases up. Uh, but at which point, if you've been sculpting for like an hour and everything looks pretty good, but then you've broken some pieces of it, can you still like export it to like Blender or Maya and then like go in and like box select a little broken mesh and like you basically have used the smooth tool to adjust it. The idea is, basically when that happens, it means you're rushing. So you build into your process of just taking your time and not rushing into it and building up slowly. Usually those errors happen, and they will happen. But is it also like abusing the program and like trying to just push it a little too... No, it's it's just you're 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 not being precise enough for it. It wants you to actually take your time. It's the idea of like if I'm if I'm painting a masterpiece, there is no time limit. It takes how long it takes. So it's like if you put hours and hours into getting your masterpiece, and then you notice, uh oh, hours back there at one point, I screwed up a bunch of faces being sloppy in the beginning. I didn't notice until now. Then you would have to retopologize it. You'd bring it into Maya. And then you could go in and... Well, remember, this is your high-res model. So make it clear, oh, this is the high-res. This is not the game model. This is not the movie model. This is the model that we're going to build up to 6 million polygons or whatever to get those details. This is not a functioning, moving character. Like, even so, to retopo it from high-res to low-res, you still don't want to have, like... When you retop it, it's going to be a new model. <laughs> it's not going to be the okay, same so one. There's some broken mesh on it. I mean, you you don't you don't want to be extreme because when you generate your normal maps, it's going to base it off of the normals. But we're not trying to get it. We're not optimizing it for a, a functioning, moving character. We're optimizing it or creating it based off of detail. So when I get the details in here, and I get all the sculpts. This is the first half of making a model that is going to be in an actual movie or game. This is, but I'm not, I'm not stressing at that point right now for that. I'm, you know, I, I don't want there to be all sorts of weird things going on. And if there is, then, you know, I can zoom it out. Or if I realize where the mistake was, I can mask or hide it out. So in other words, if I had something like... Yeah. Well, watch this. Like, if I actually take this and I just pull it in like that and I go, oops. I can actually go as if that was the only thing in that area that I did. I could actually just either mask that out or I could even erase that area. But it's also going to do it based off of whatever I actually did previously. This is why if I break things up into, into layers and I check it every time before I create a new layer, I have a lot more control to stop things like that from happening. Okay, so you can also prevent losing too much time. Yes. If you did make a bad mistake and you don't want to lose the time you sculpted into the pool, so it's like a save point. So right now I'm going to hit save because you never know when something's going to happen. The other thing to make sure of is that Mudbox can actually get really nuts with uh, how big the file sizes are when you have lots of subdivisions, okay? So I've seen Mudbox files be a couple of gigs, just one file, and that's not even including the textures that go into it. So it's not, that's what I'm saying, it's like it's not optimized for use in anywhere else but Mudbox or when I bring it into Maya to make a low-res um, version. Like the way you did the buildings, you had them cut into little different pieces. For, okay, I, was, I would say for what reason? I'll just have it high res as hell and then export each piece. Just remember, I think you're trying to like optimize it. It's, two t it's apples and oranges. This guy, I don't care as long as my com computer can run it. I don't care if it's 12 million as long as my computer can run it. <laughs> because that's not the one I'm going to do. I'm already thinking I'm going to have to make an optimized version that's entirely different. So... You know, so that's that's basically the general idea. So, so the 
first one, the high res one, is kind of like the underdrawing. But then it's like weird because the underdrawing has more detail than the final drawing. Well, you're going to transfer that information through a normal map. So let me show a few things because I still want to touch on uh, some substance stuff. But I, there's a couple of things I definitely want to get through on here. Yep. The UVs you make for the low res. The normals are irrelevant on the high res to the low res UVs. They're projected onto the low res UVs because it's a texture map. The high res, it's not a UVs, it's actual mesh. So, now, as I start to go in, if you guys check this out, oh, look at this. If I change my fallout and my brush, watch this. I'm going to choose, like, right now, this is the third fall, fall off. And if I go here, that's, like, you know, I could add my clavicle. If I change it to the first one, you'll notice it's a lot sharper in the center. You see that? And then I could start to... Uh, this part right here from behind the ear that comes down to the front. Watch this. So we come in here and we start to detail this out a little bit. See that? Now when I hold down control, I invert the brush. And that's how I could start to push some areas inward. You see that? <coughs> So control, left mouse button, and now I'm starting to push in areas. See that? And that's how I could start to go in and highlight certain areas. Or pull them out, like the Adam's apple right there. I can also start to use this. To define out certain areas of like his his chin, check that out. Where I'm starting to get a little bit more of that chiseled hero chin. And if I actually use the grab tool, then I can give him a little nip and tuck. Kind of pull that once again underneath and really start to define that hero jaw. Absolutely, you could do like you have a lot of control over the stuff that you can uh, start to develop inside of here. So you can just bulge out like these little tentacles and get really sci fi and weird. And yeah, it's fun. It's pretty fun. There you go, give him the, the chin. Gotta have the hero chin. Yeah, we'll give him a cleft. Now, check this out. I'm gonna show you just some of the face details and a few of the other tools. And then uh, a couple of other things, then we'll jump into uh, some substance. So check this out. So there's a few tools I can use to detail out uh, and get more uh, control. Right now he's very smooth. And as we get you know to a higher resolution, eventually we'll be able to put pores and wrinkles and stuff like that. I want to shape his face out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, um, and different people have different methods. I'm going to use a low pressure bulge tool and start to develop uh, his cheekbones a little bit. You see that? And I'm using the fall off of one. You mean like you turn the wires on?
You mean like the flat shaded kind of with the wiring on him? Yeah, just more. Or X-ray, I mean. Yeah, X-ray. Uh, what's your end game? I guess uh, would be the. Just to see more of the edge flow of the face while the you're Edge flow right now. Once again, or that the, worry worry about that on the low res. Okay. <laughs> so all that is the low res. Yes, this is not, this isn't that, this is, now check this out, since I'm making these nostrils and you're like, oh, that's a little bit big, that's okay, we're going to do something, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the, the grab tool, I'm going to start to, tuck this in and adjust it as I, I see fit. And as I do that, depending on where I'm pulling on it and how much I pull on it, you'll see it starts to kind of develop that little shape that we can get. Um, if things start getting weird, I can use the smooth tool. See that? Lower its pressure and start to kind of soften things out and blend them a little bit more, depending on how much pressure in the smooth tool I use. And before I go further, I'm going to go back in to the bulge, tighten that up, and uh, start to control left mouse and make the nostrils themselves, and push those inward. See that? So you see how it's starting to, huh? <laughs> oh, that's because I don't have shadows on, but yeah. So you, but you can look at the profile and what kind of schnoz you want to give him. You know, his little button nose is it more distinctive. Is it more penciled? You know, and and just kind of tighten that up based off of what look you want and really just start to detail that out and then you can go in and start to give um, maybe with the sculpt tool turn off stamp turn off stamp spacing and let's make sure the fall off is set to one. And I'm gonna remember to lower your pressure if you don't. Oh my gosh, the poor man. So you wanna make sure you always check your pressure of how high it is and lower that down as you need it. And then I can go in and start to, see that, define out certain things. And depending on the scale of the brush and how big it is and the lower pressure. Now, sometimes you'll realize, like, ooh, drawing a line is really difficult. Let me show you how I can draw a line easier and have more control. In your properties, there's something called steady stroke. And when I turn that on, its default is set to four. So when I actually start drawing with it, look what happens. There's a little dot that comes out of the line, and then I just simply follow it. So what that basically means is that it makes it a lot easier for me to follow a path. See? To start to get that. And then if that's good, that's getting, I can use the smooth tool to soften that up a little bit. So it's not quite as severe. I'm still on uh, three. Oh, okay. And I'll be able to get even more detail uh, soon, but I'm kind of rushing just because time more than anything else. But uh, you could start to see, define a little bit more of that jaw. 
There we go. Do you see that how his face is forming? And once again, I'm not trying to do that one hit wonder of just let me do one stroke and it's a masterpiece instantly. You know, I'm trying to actually build up on him and get some of these details. See that? And I'm not making any harsh lines yet. I'm not trying to uh, immediately check it out. We could start to see those details coming. And now I'm going to work on the lips a little bit. And I'm using um, the bulge with the number one fall off, and I'm just kind of outlining a little bit. You'll see why in a second. And it's going to look a little bit weird, like he's doing a duck face at first. Don't worry about it. We'll fix that. <laughs> we will not leave him in a duck, a prissy duck face. No. <laughs> we would not do that to our hero. <laughs> <Pretty good story. laughs> yeah, Zoolander. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Contrary to the movie, he was not a hero. So, so I just go in and I start to do that. And I'm going to add just a little bit of detail to the, um, the eyes as well. And I'm just going to make uh, the shape of the eyes kind of pop out a little bit. Because even if your eyes are receded, your eyeballs are still you know, spherical and your skin is, is on top of them. So your eyeball, even though your eye sockets are receded, your eyeballs actually come forward and then the eye uh, lids are on top of them. So I'm just going to pop those out just a little bit so that I can make the eyelids on top of them a bit. And I'll get their placement more later. But yes, he is doing the duck face right now. Sorry, hero, just for a second. So... Okay. Yeah, I know with the chiseled jaw and the sucked in cheeks, it's doing it even more. But, <laughs> so what we're going to do now, I'm going to jump ahead so I can show you guys extra detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a brand new layer. And I'm going to hit Shift D. And let's just crank that puppy up to level 5. And I think that's how where we'll stay for a while. And now I'm going to go in. And on the lips, I'm going to, uh, let's first kind of tuck in. Let's use the, where are you? Where are you, my knife tool? Okay, there you are. So I'm going to use the knife tool. I'm going to lower the intensity a lot. And I'm going to check that out. Do you see that, where I just cut right in or like did this little cut so I use the knife tool low intensity I'm at a 0 0.09 okay and I'm not doing a perfect straight line because guess what we don't have perfect straight lines on us <laughs> right so I've got this knife tool I've kind of sliced into there to part his lips and now I'm going to show you a really cool trick so we go to the sculpt tool, we go to the stamps, and we go all the way to the right. And on the right side, you'll notice at the stamps, uh, there's these gray boxes. If you put your cursor over them, uh, and this will also help for if they're really dinky on your screen right now, which again, I apologize, uh, but if you, it'll show a name. Choose the one that is called Edge, uh, V Edge ED, VDM and select that one. So you'll see a little gray box. It's called, if you put your cursor over it, it will say um, stamps 
v edge vdm tiff and you'll see in my tool so i'm on the sculpt tool and i select it and you see it says use a uh, stamp image and what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom into that and i'm going to make sure certain things are set so i want it to follow the path which is this one i do not want it to randomize so make sure that's unchecked. Um, 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 um. Let's try no stamp spacing for right now. And uh, OK, so now when I go across, oops, this one you do have to crank up fairly high. So yeah, crank you up even higher. Oops. So, all right, I'm going to lower that down. And actually, you know what? Let's, yeah. Okay, turn on stamp spacing. And let's do, obviously, it will depend on the details of your character and how you did it. But watch this first before you try it. Let me crank it up so you can see what it's doing first. So, and I'll do it along down here and then go back up to the face. So I'm going to make my brush larger. And what I can do is as I pull it, do you see what it's doing? Let me crank it up even higher. I can make a seam like this. You see that? Like a cowl or, or if I go the opposite direction, it makes the seam the other way. You see that? So if I turn on symmetry. I crank this up. I might get a 75. Watch this. Do you see that? Where I can get this nice edge for a superhero outfit. You see that? If I go over it again, it'll crank it out even more. That's where the steady stroke comes in. See that? Now, one direction will put the edge on one side. The opposite direction will put it on the other side. So you have to be mindful of which direction you're going. So if I do it this way, using my steady stroke to go across the edge, look at that. Isn't that nice? And then I go the opposite direction underneath it. See? Isn't that cool? The higher the resolution, the cleaner it'll be. But you can see, man, that looks pretty cool. That's, look at that. What's your strength back 75 with a stamp spacing of 11. you like now where this comes in on the lips is where we can actually add details to the lips so watch this so if I go to the lips so can you use, use that to actually imprint letters like into the costume say like a TC or what have you? there's another way of doing that but check this out look at the lips now And the size of the brush will affect how that's being affected. You see that? And then we can use the grab tool if we want. Check it out. This is kind of funny. If we do want him to have that smirk, look. <laughs> Oi, he's very unhappy and pouting. <laughs> Sven is not pleased. So hmm? now I'm using the grab tool just to adjust this. But that was the, um, when I did the edge, it was the, uh, the sculpting tool and using the edge texture as a stamp.
But do you see that? Check it out. Look at the lips now. And then if I want to, I can just use a smooth tool just to soften the edges just a little bit. Because your lips actually aren't just these harsh lines. They blend into your mouth. They just have just certain features that, you know, that make it look like they would be lines. But I don't want it to be like super hard lines with them. See that? Let me show you just a couple more techniques, and then uh, we can continue it on uh, this, this portion next class, because I would like to get into texturing and stuff in here. But if you have a, a character that has like specific details, right? Maybe he's like, you know, the body armor that, you know, uh, uh, that, that's very popular in hero movies now, where it's like this skin type body armor, and you can see the seams. Let me show you how to do that. Check this out. I use my knife tool, and let's say I'm going to cut a seam right here. Oops, and that looks good, but I'm going to crank it up just a little bit, not by much, a little bit. And let's say I'm going to cut it like this. You see that? So I've got this, but here's where you get to make it look even cooler. Now that I have that in, use your pinch tool, turn on steady stroke and go across it and watch what happens oops let me crank it up it's a little low do you see that now i can get a really some really clean seams on there check that out so when i'm actually doing that now if i have that superhero suit and there's all these cool armor pieces and designs i can actually use that to really start to detail it out and add some really nice features and start going through and making it, you know, sections and stuff like that, that would be really sick. If I have images, I can stencil them in. So, like, if uh, the Superman shield or something like that, I can bring in an image and project it and stencil it onto his chest. Right. Um, so there, there's all those things. All these stamps and the stencils. Let me just show you what a stencil does. So, like, there's the, uh, oh, here's a circle stencil right here that I'm using. And what you'll notice is to the bottom left are the controls on how to use it. Move the stencil is S plus middle button. Rotate the stencil is S plus left. Scale it is S plus right, and to hide it so it's not you being used is Q. So whatever image I'm using or whatever I bring in, I can actually use that. And let's say S, right mouse button, here's the circle. So I zoom in, the stencil stays the same. Zoom out. On this one, I would probably use I could use my bulge, I could use my sculpt. Let's use the bulge. Make sure that when you go back to the sculpting tool, if you're gonna use that to turn off the stamp image, because otherwise it's gonna use whatever that you had last, and you'll wonder why it's not working right. So I'm gonna go to the bulge tool. Let's just try that. I'm gonna turn off mirror for this particular thing. Increase my brush size. Check it out. You see that? And I just added that onto him. See that? So now, Q, you see that? And then I could even go in, turn Q back on, position it. And now I will invert it by holding down control, push it in. See? <laughs> I could turn the stencil off, got that in. If it's a little, it's a little low res because once again, if I went to level six, it would smooth it out. But you just have to be careful of that. Um, 
and then I could take an image or whatever and just put it in, or I could use uh, those curves we talked about to add different shapes and stuff in there. If I want to just give it a subtle smooth, I would just use the smooth tool and then just lightly go over that. You see that just to soften it out a little bit. Now it's not doesn't have those rough edges just to soften it a little bit. But any projection I use when I use my stencils, I can use to actually um, create, look at that texture, you see that? So stenciling this gives me this. Just like if I had chosen a different one like brick. He's brick oh man <laughs> Either that or when he was flying, he ran smack dab into a brick wall. So like if I did that, ouch. He's just learning. Watch out for that tree. So any of these that you actually get, you can actually toss at it. And you can bring in your own images. You can even stencil, check it out, uh, eventually like a human face, uh, whether it be sculpting or texturing. Like if I had a texture like a paintbrush, and then I would actually stencil that onto as a texture onto uh, our character. So lots of different stuff we'll get into as we continue on. But I just wanted you guys to see that. And we'll, we'll do a little more of it later. If you're going to project it as a texture and you would need a texture map. We'll get into that. But I know there's so much. See, when, when we can mind meld and then I can show you all the stuff instantly, of course, then uh, class would be like one day. It was like, hey, <laughs> what now? Uh, oh, for what? The, uh, like, if you're, so I use the bulge and then uh, to, like, pop it out. And uh, it's relative to how dense your model is and how far you want it to go. So you have to, like, kind of mess around with it and, you know, see if something doesn't work, then immediately just, oops, undo, and then just, you know, adjust it accordingly. You have to crank it up really high. Oh, really? Like 75, 80. Uh, on the uh, yes, and make sure the edge tool is in the sculpt tool. So you have the sculpt tool selected, and then that stamp is turned on in, in there, and then crank the strength up to like 75 or something. And that's also what I would use if I were doing uh, just sculpting the eyelids. You know, so <coughs> you see this? Do you guys see this? We're doing the eyes oh, using nice. the edge. Very good. <laughs> but if you have something like this and you go, oops, that's a little bit off, then I just use the grab tool and just tuck the eyes over just a little bit so that they are more to where I would want them. See? Isn't that cool? Oh, one last thing before we move on. You, this one you'll totally love. So, besides using images, different brush tips, things like that to sculpt, there's, um, you can use a vector image. And what that is, is imagine that when you're actually, um, you're, you're doing a creature or a person and you're going to be doing a lot of sculpting and you don't want to have to keep recreating the same thing over and over again. So if I sculpt out an ear, which can take a fair amount of time, rather than doing it every single time on a new character, I could actually sculpt out an ear, save it as a vector displacement image, and then apply it to a new model just to generate it and then tweak it out from there. I could do that for a nose, ears, 
I could do it for like, you know, weird things coming out of someone's body if they aren't extruding out too far. Um, I could do that for lots of things. Hold that thought. <laughs> Nope, you do it in here. You'd sculpt it in here, you'd create it in here. So, let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna choose the um, stencil, and if you go in your stencils all the way to the right, you'll notice some gray images. One is called a human ear, and one is called uh, V-tiled scales, and that's their def ones they give you. I'm gonna choose the human ear, and check it out. Do you see this ear here? I'm going to scale our character up so that it matches to that. And I could do this a few different ways. Okay, I can, uh, oops, you know what? Jinkies, shut that off. I want to, you want to choose which, um, how you want to place that. So you can either imprint it, imprint things, right? Or you can actually, what I'm going to do is, uh, instead of imprinting it, I'm just simply going to go in and choose uh, the sculpt. And I'm going to choose that ear as a stencil. And now, watch me do this before you do it, just so you can see. So I have it in scale. I'm going to line it up the way I want. I'm going to crank up the strength pretty high. And when I say high, it's like at around 68 or something. And watch what happens when I just go over this. And I'm just going back and forth all over it to get that sculpt in. And I'm going to hide it and take a look. So I could have lined it up a little bit better, but you get the idea. Right? And once you have it in there, then you can use the grab tool and start to adjust it. So let me show you that again. Sculpting tool. We choose that uh, vector displacement. We got that here. Uh, stencil. We line that puppy up. Because it's a three-dimensional image. It, it's almost like a normal map in some ways, but it's actually a displacement that will sculpt it. Originally, someone sculpted out an ear on a flat plane and then just converted it to this, and then you can now just stamp it on or, or stencil it on to whoever. So now, let me turn off stamp spacing. Check it out. And depending on the intensity... and the resolution of your um, model, it will give you a different amount of control. But now that I've got that, let me hide that can here. Can you the eyes also? Oh, you could do whatever that you sculpt out, well, almost. But now I do have to make some adjustments, so I'll use the grab tool. And then I'll start to adjust it as I see fit. And then check it out. Now I could adjust him. Look at this. This is fun. So we could actually tighten it up. And now we can actually get him, give him a little more lobes. Let's make him more elfy. Or Vulcan. See? And I could even go in now with the grab tool. Uh-oh, some stuff's about to go down. Make him a little bit angrier. Pull his... Uh... And now you can see how you could start to go in and really uh, have a little bit of fun with this. You see that? Uh, that other one we talked about, the scales, check this out. These are the scales here, and here's another little trick. 
you notice it's only restricted right now to that one little square. I can actually go in and tile this, whatever I'm using. So when I select it, it pulls up its properties and there's an option, use tiles. So now I can go in I go now do you see this so depending on how I actually do that And then I just do it as a projection. And of course, if I had this as a, uh, there we go. See that? Check it out. The man from Atlantis <laughs> with male pattern scales going on. So, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's next to the ear. Yeah. See? So see? Uh, when you select it, go into the options. There's one that says use tiles. So if you click on that one, just click use tiles. And then it will uh, allow you to tile that. Uh, Cool. So this is really cool when you're like, if I'm doing a creature and I'm trying to get, you know, trying to get certain looks for my creature. See? Well, you can rotate it. So if I have it here, yeah. so it'll be whatever direction that I actually set it to. And then it'll actually go in that. So if I rotate it like this, now it's going up. You see? Pretty sweet, though, huh? So... That, that is pretty much the, the gist of a lot of it. There's more stuff I could show you, but the, when you're actually doing your sculpting, start from silhouettes low to high. Build up on your details. Don't try and jump immediately into them. Use some good reference uh, materials for like anatomy and clothing and stuff like that. Clothing, you can... As in games, you decide, am I sculpting the clothing onto the character, or am I going to add them in Maya? If I'm going to add them in Maya, I would export this guy out. And depending on your setup, you, there's actually an option where you can send it to Maya and work simultaneously. So when I work in one, I have them both open, and it updates the other. It's a little wonky, to, especially if you have multiple versions of Maya and Mudbox on your machine. So usually I just export it out as an FBX import it into Maya and then model my clothing onto the character so that it fits. And can you use this in Unity and um, for gaming also? The, when you make the retopologized version, remember this is the high res. So you use it for the design, you can use it for the texturing, but it's the low res that goes in. The low res, in this case, since I started with a model that it created, so I'd make this one, but to generate my low res, do you guys want to see that? 
just as far as so what I could do let's say this guy is all finished right but this is my level 5 version which is 2,117,632 polygons would not fly in a game the low res version of this if I start paging down this is the lowest res and this is the level 1 this is probably the one I would send into the game but I want it to look like this I can generate that inside of here I can generate in other programs but I can generate it inside of here so let me show you how to do that so all these little sculpted details I have would go into the normal map okay the O the seams if I put more of them the scales the details in the face if, if I had actually gone in and did wrinkles and stuff like that all those would go into the low res so this is how it works I go to where it says UVs and maps. Is that right? Yeah. And I want to extract a texture map, and there's a set part for new operation. And you'll see here is where I can choose a whole bunch of different ones. Transfer paint layers, that would be if I want to transfer the high res textures, maybe I painted the high res and I want to transfer it to the low res or from one model to the other. Maybe it's one that wasn't retopologized that well and I want to transfer it to the new version. Ambient occlusion map, if I want an ambient occlusion map. Vector displacement map, that's how we did the ear. So I would use that to create, like, you know, I want to always make be able to just stamp an ear or nose and then tweak it out. A displacement map, which would be for, like, if I'm rendering an Arnold and I want it to, when it renders, actually create these scales on my low-res model. And a normal map. So I'm going to choose normal map, and it tells me here. And it even populated these areas. How oh, nice. So it's asking me, like, oh, the target model... Is it level zero or one? Ah, we'll go at level one. Let's not go super low res. The source is the same one, level five. This is nice. The newer version actually pops that in. Um, when we get down to here, and it does the same thing. When I put my cursor over stuff, it shows me different things. Method, we're going to use ray casting. Uh, if uh, choose subdivision if you know the source and target meshes have the same topology I could use subdivisions in this case but I'm just going to use ray casting uh, choose samples so when we go in here it's what it means is how is it going to scan these details is it going to scan from the outside in inside out both I'm going to say uh, and it gives you furthest outside, furthest inside, closest uh, to low res uh, mesh. I'm going to say furthest outside. And then the search distance. Um, I usually I hit best guess and then add an extra value. So it's saying 18. I'm going to go 19. And just even it off. And then it's saying, okay, generate one map for all targets. This means if I have multiple objects, like sometimes your character will be multiple pieces when you bring it in, but ultimately you're going to bring it together or just something different. Do I want to have all the normal maps on one texture file, or do I want them separated for every mesh? And I'm going to say, give me a 2K uh, image size with some anti-aliasing to soften it up, just a 2X. So a 2K should give me a decent normal map off of here. And, uh, oh, compatibility. This one's weird. So my, this is actually important, especially for you guys doing game stuff. So it's asking Maya Software compatibility or 3D Studio Max compatibility. And it's wondering, like, well, what's the difference? Okay. If you've noticed, um, I don't know if you guys have messed with Studio Max at all, but some programs translate Y is up and down like Maya and other programs translate Z is up and down 
And that's basically what it is asking. Which one of these are, am I, what's my output? What's my end game? If I'm going into a game engine where Z is up and down, then I'd want to choose Studio Max. If it's Y is up and down, then I'd want to choose uh, the Maya version. That's really what the difference is, because it kind of rotates what the XYZ axis is of a normal map. Does that make sense? So it'll be a little bit off. Isn't that Unity and Maya are the same? Uh, I forgot what Unity. You guys would know before, because <laughs> I don't use Unity that much, of what's up and down, whether it's Y or Z. Hold on one sec, Vivek. I'll be right there. Uh, so I'm just going to choose for right now um, Maya. Let's say we would just show it in there. And we're going to go tangent space because it's normal maps. Yes, we're generating a texture, not a PTEX. And the file name, this is where you choose um, where it's going to go and what the name is going to be. And I'm going to call it uh, demo guy underscore NRM for normal. And it asks you like what file type. Um, I usually use TIFFs and Targas, but uh, you can use a PNG and stuff like that. But I'm just gonna say uh, um, a Targa and save. And it's 8-bit preview. Preview as a normal map. Yes, I do want to do that. And then once it's all set up and I've got all my goodies in here, I hit extract. And it'll take a minute for it to calculate it, and then I'll show you what the difference is. So here's a little menu. It's telling you it's not, it's faster than Maya is. See, it already finished it. Yay. Okay, now I close it. Now check this out. So here's my guy, and I might have to make some changes. I could see some things wrong, but I'm gonna page down. Watch this. All the way to one. There's my normal map. If I go to my paint text, uh, paint layers, without the normal map, with the normal map. So that's my low res with the normal map. How cool is that? Without it, with it. There's some errors right in here because he, uh, I probably could tighten up the scan, but what's happening is it's getting confused when it's scanning it right there. So if I'm getting that problem, I could either take the high res and low res mesh and put it into something like um, Substance Painter or um, Substance Designer and crank out a normal map and it's a little bit more accurate. Another option I have is to paint the normal map to try and fix some things. So if, not by color, but what I usually will do is I'm on the normal map and I'll use something like the blur tool and then see that when I paint the normal map in the blur tool to get rid of some of these little errors I have here. Just to smooth that out a bit. Won't work for everything, but for something like that where it's a miscalculation, that cleans it up pretty quick. And that's my normal map on a low res guy. Now he looks like the high res. See? Pretty sweet, huh? That's why some of those things that you guys were asking earlier isn't going to matter as much because this is the version that's going to go into the game engine. This one is much, much lower resolution. Right? So basically, what the crystal, I see like in the beginning crystal you did it for each layer you created, you work with each subdivision. You can have multiple layers of the same subdivision. You break it up on details, but yes, you do do uh, break it up into there. For example, if you wanted to, if you wanted to create a layer of sculpting, then you create a layer of sculpting and sculpting that layer. And if you wanted to paint, you create an another layer and dedicate that layer to solely and strictly painting. Yeah, and you can have multiple layers, just like in Photoshop for painting. We didn't get a chance to get into it, so would but. That mean, would that mean basically you can have multiple paint layers? For example, one paint layer you can paint on top of another. Paint Absolutely. Absolutely. Chauncey? Um, yeah, I was going to say, uh, like coming from my second life, uh, you know, your character would have like hair as a separate piece, eyes would be like a separate piece, clothes would be separate pieces, you can have like separate hands and stuff. 
Mm-hmm. It's like some of the models like ripped off of like Mixima, I've noticed, or like all one in May. So I don't know. What do you prefer with like hair? Do you like to like pull it out of the guy's skull? Oh, uh, so that's a good question. So when you're dealing with hair, there is no one way of doing it. It depends on a few things. Number one, it depends on the style of your character. Some characters have that molded hair like Jimmy Neutron, right? It's just this big molded sculpted shape, right? And then you paint it with hair on it. That's one version. Now, if you have that, that could be a separate mesh that could either be molded or it could be um, cards. So what you would do is you would make polygonal cards um, that would go on the hair. So if I actually went like um, Gears of War models. So if I wanted to see, where is he? Marcus. It and you, there once again there's no um oh Dom that was it um so this is where it's like more molded right there but it, and I'm looking for it I can't find it Dom has like a whole bunch of cards there's the character and he has a whole bunch of cards that are um have little hair uh, images on them with alphas. So he has a whole bunch of little cards all over for his beard and all for his hair. Little polygonal cards, little planes that are just all over. And that's what's giving him that fullness and showing the hair. And then it's just literally combined with the character. Um, all right. So that when you actually see it, and I wish I could actually, it always pulls up when I'm not looking for it. Um, oh, there was another one. Uh, Uncharted for models. So when you're looking at some characters and you're seeing, ah, here we go, this, those cards. So each one of those, all, they're all using mostly the same texture. They're just placed on there with an alpha. And then that's what's giving you the volume and then the hair actually going. Now, depending on the character and the level of detail, you use less cards, more cards. Or you can have a mixture where you actually have these shapes that are kind of pulled out away from the head and then the cards on top to give volume. So it really just kind of depends aesthetically on what the look is you're going for but do you see what I mean yeah. and then and for longer hair you would have these longer cards that would actually come out doing the hair they're not going to show up that, that much at all because they're using an alpha uh, an alpha mass. So basically, you're just going to reap the benefits, and if you have a good material shader on it, uh, then you're not. It, it's going to look pretty darn realistic. So, but once again, how you approach hair is based off of what the look is and what engine or what your output is, and that's how you do, you know decide between it of how you're going to go about it. So the first thing you need to lock down is the style and the look, and then you worry about how you would actually start to pan it out. That I could show you. It's not that difficult, but it's just one of those things where you need to actually lock down the style and, and how realistic and is the care animated and stuff like that.